I just put this mailbox in. I made it at my house. I pre-made it and I brought it and I dropped it in. I'll explain why you do that anymore. Uh, but now I'm going to show you how I did it. Now the very first thing I'm going to do when I built this mailbox is I got some blocks. I put it up on a piece of wood. I make sure that I'm completely level all the way around. Now I went and bought my capstone. I look at this end. I look at this end. This is the better end. So that's the end that's going to go on the bottom. Because the bad end is going to go on top. Now I made sure that I'm absolutely level here. That's real important. Level all the way around. Now they're not going to get the stone for uh, over a month. They order a special type. But this is a piece of uh, cultured stone. And this is a piece of real stone. Uh, same thing. They cut it out however they make it. Well I know just from experiences I want to keep it back at least an inch and a half from the corners. Now this stone is 24 inches by 24 and a quarter. They're always a little bit off. So you, sometimes you just gotta go by eye. I want to give them I want to give an inch and three quarters. That's where the face of my stone should end up, right there. Inch and three quarters this way. That's what I'm figuring. So the first thing I'm going to do is, is uh, put my marks in an inch and three quarters. I measured back an inch and three quarters, right there. And i got to put the screen behind that. I have to put my, uh, here it is. I'm going to put my tile board against that. And my 2x4 is going to go against that. And I have to leave a quarter inch space just for my concrete, or for my cement that goes around it. So right there is about where I got to build my frame. And I got two and a half inches. Well, just because I know we're going to need more cement, I'm going to go three and a quarter inches, or two and three quarter inches right there. Now these are my inside dimensions. I checked it with my square all the way around to make sure it all works good. So basically that's where my wood's going to go. That's where my stone's going to go. And then I have enough space for my cement and my wire. So I, I left almost a half inch for the cement. And uh, so I'm all ready to go now. And now I know what my dimensions are. Very important. Anytime you're going to do a project, lay it out dry. Forget about the rulers. Rulers come last and squares come last. Lay it out dry and get the feel of it. I am now building my frame. So I got these boards together. I got to make sure they're absolutely square. And I know this is my mailbox right there. By postal regulations, you have to be at least 41 inches from the ground when you're sticking your hand in between 41 and 45 inches. So it's going to go a couple inches in the ground so I got it at 45 and then I got the top of my mailbox and according to that lady's picture I got another four and a half inches. So right now I'm making this 58 and a half inches. Now I squared this board and I got a straight edge to run against. Now I'm going to make my cuts. Now again I come back to my stone, I lay it out dry again, that's going to be my another four cuts. It'll be same thing on this side, lay it out dry, make our mark. Now we're putting together our frame, I always drill the hole first pilot hole that keeps the wood from splitting. I'm going to use a deck screw. Putting my thing together. We're getting this all together. Now we're looking at our mailbox. That's it upside down. So actually when we we'll looking at it, it'll be looking like that. That's our cap and that's our mailbox. I'm using a tile backing board and I'm going to put that, I'm going to cut it first and then put it on the sides. 
And to cut it, I'm just going to use my little 4-inch grinder. our mailbox. Now this is sitting upside down exactly the way it's going to sit when we put it in. There's one last thing I'm going to do. I'm going to mark right here. When we put our stone cap on, I'm going to put two, some blocks of wood to hold this uh, stone cap on. You'll see how I do that. This is a stucco L channel they call it. So I'm going to go right around with it. I'm going to do it in such a way that it, it bands the whole bottom together. So I could bend it like this. I want to go around the whole bottom with that. Now we got our band going around the bottom and our band on the top. I'm continuing on. I wrap my uh, wire mesh around and I'm just using uh, a washer. You see the washer and the deck screw. And I'm tightening it up right like that and screwing it in. Now we're finishing up. We're putting our metal on. Now, just so you know, I threw in one bucket of sand and a half a bucket of this type S mortar, it's called. And just for, uh, just for a little extra, I threw in a shovel of Portland, which you see in all my videos. You could use the stuff that they uh, sell that's pre-mixed, uh, just for stone, but I, I'm old school, I like to do it this way. Now I'm going to start putting a coat of uh, my first coat on it. Right over the screen. I want to put it on just a little bit thicker to cover that screen. Like that. But when I'm going around the mailbox, I want to make a point here. I put a, some styrofoam around here. It's called a uh, seal seal. It goes between your foundation and your and your wood when you're putting in a house. The reason I did that is I want to, if I take this mailbox off, I want to pull it out without it being stuck to the cement. I call this thing a scratcher. A lot of plaster guys use it, or you could use a broom. And you just scratch it. I like this because it goes a little deeper. I leave deep marks in there. And that's going to be or my stone which goes over that. If you were wondering what's going to hold this stone on to the top of the mailbox, I get two pieces of wood here. I'm going to drill through them. So I put a piece of tape on that so I don't go too deep. And then I get my little plastic nipple, put it in, I line these up. That's it. There's one more thing I'm going to do to this stone since I have it upside down. I'm going to put a drip edge on it. And all a drip edge does, first we're going to put it on. edge does is when it rains the water comes around it starts to go in towards the stone and hits a drip edge and it falls off. I have the mailbox turned over and I drill holes and then what's going to hold that into the concrete in the footer is these steel bars going right through. So 
that's how I'm going to keep the mailbox from tipping over. We finally got the stone about three weeks later, and the first thing I do is I always lay it out dry because I know I want to know exactly everything's good before I start working on it. Then I get over here. The first thing I'm doing, as you can see, is I'm making a pattern. I'm going to cut that out, and that's going to be my arch around my mailbox. Okay, at this point, I got everything laid out dry, just the way it's going to go into the pattern, and now I'm going to put this part in to make sure I'm right. First thing I always do, if you want this stuff to stick, you got to wet it, especially something around an arch. And I wet the back of these too, and then I'm going to put on my these sections first. Make sure that sticks real good in there. Put that in first. Shake it in there. I always gotta shake it in. We got our sides on. So we're continuing on. I worked my top and now. I'm coming up from the bottom with all my corners. I want to use all my corners up to make sure it all jives correctly. So all I'm doing right now is the same thing I did in all my other videos. And uh, I'm using all my corners up. That way if I'm short on corners or something, I know exactly what I'm going to do. Also still marking them. I cut them where I want. And I'm putting it in. Make it fit. Well, as you know, 99% of the time, I always fill my joints in as I go. I think it's a little stronger. And it's a little better. Then you just get the back of the paintbrush, just like in the other videos I did. I'm going to smooth it over. Everybody's got their own style of stonework. A lot of guys do it a different way. This is my style. I grew up doing this. And we just get a sponge in water. Rinse the sponge out and just go over the edges. That's it. Dug our hole and uh, I'm going to put about five inches of gravel. Tamping it real good. I'm just going to get a bag of bag and go around it and lay on that so the wood is off the moisture. around the sides with some cement and now I'm just covering it. That's it. Now I'm just packing up underneath it because we don't want to get any bees in there, any holes. And then you say to me, Mike, why did you pre-make this thing? Well, a couple reasons. First, it would have had to bring everything on the job and do it here. The second reason is if you do try to do that, everybody wants to stop you for some reason. So if you just do it at the house and deliver it, there's a lot less, let's just say, controversy. 